Good day to you all snow lovers. This is Ethan from the Sawtooth Avalanche Center with today's weekend update for February 3rd, 2023. As a reminder, this does not replace the daily avalanche forecast, so please check that out every morning at 7 a.m. at sawtoothavalanche.com. Our week in review. We had a small windy storm January 27th through the 29th, which was last weekend. Uh, that storm produced some natural wind slab avalanches, which we'll talk about. You can see the storm totals from that storm on the left side of the screen there, six to eight inches in Banner Summit, six to 10 in the Sawtooth's Western Smokies, three to six in Galena Summit, and the Eastern Mountains, which also include the White Clouds, Boulders, and Pioneers, and uh, one to four inches around the Soldiers and the mountains surrounding the Wood River Valley. After those natural wind slab avalanches, shortly following the storm, we had a skier triggered slide, which involved a buried layer of surface ore that we've been talking about in the forecast for about the last two weeks, three weeks almost now. And at the end of this, we'll take a look ahead to a storm that should arrive on Sunday and see what that means for avalanche conditions uh, moving forward. A little bit of a recap of the weather. This is from the Lower Titus Weather Station along Galena Pass. You can see the start of the week. This is Friday of last week going into last weekend. We had a cooling trend as a storm arrived and these blue bars indicate that it's snowing. This black is uh, increasing precipitation amounts, uh, total amounts um, with time. Um, we had a cold snap on Monday morning, then we've been slowly warming with a little bit of snow every now and again, but mostly just calm, uh, pretty nice weather, and it got pretty hot yesterday and a little bit blustery uh, today, which is Friday. Speaking of that cold snap, this is uh, the temperature trend again going into Monday morning. It was well below zero down here in Haley, one of the coldest uh, mornings I can recall in quite some time. And from Ben's forecast that morning, he says it is negative 33 Fahrenheit in Smiley Creek and negative 37 in Copper Basin, which is uh, really pretty remarkable. I even heard rumors that it hit negative 40 on that morning. So if you can prove it, uh, take a picture of the dash or you have a picture of the dash uh, temperature readout, send it our way. I'd be interested to see it. We did have a little bit of wind over the course of the week. Again, here is that time frame right here, uh, uh, Sunday when we had a little bit of wind following that storm. That little bit of wind came mostly from the Northwest. As you can see, uh, this plot over here shows that the wind primary wind direction was the Northwest and it was blowing um, moderate speeds during a good portion of the week actually. And then uptick here uh, on Friday, which is today. That wind and snow from last weekend uh, caused some natural avalanches to occur. This one's over in the Soldier Mountains. Remember, they only got one to four inches of snow, so it is pretty remarkable uh, to see slab development like this. Although those types of that type of terrain out there, uh, just north of the Soldiers or north of Soldier Mountain ski area, rather, has these really nice long, broad ridges which allow a lot of snow, uh, a good fetch. Um, a lot of snow to be moved from one side of the slope to the other. This uh, slab looks like it broke way back into lower angled terrain, taking a good chunk of the ridge top uh, wind drift with it, anywhere from two to eight feet deep. This picture was taken on Monday. Here's another little uh, wind slab avalanche. This time we're up at the north end of our zone. This is uh, Cape Horn Mountain uh, in the Banner Summit Zone. There's only a few inches of snow and not quite as much wind up there, or a lot less wind rather. So these slabs were tend to be thinner. JP walked out Titus Ridge just right as that storm was ending and uh, he was observing some shooting cracks. So when we're talking about uh, shooting cracks as an obvious sign of instability, which we often do during and following storms, this is what we're talking about. He's just walking on his skis along this wind drifted ridge line here, and he's getting a collapse on weak snow underneath the slab that has been deposited by the storm. And when that failure um, comes up to the surface, you see these fra uh, fracture lines and these cracks form. 
A little bit further down the ridge, he observed this natural avalanche. This is just beyond Titus uh, Lake Chutes, if you're familiar with the Titus Ridge area. Here's a picture standing above the avalanche. And again, there was maybe four to six inches of new snow and some wind in this storm. And uh, if you take that, blow it around, you can create a pretty decent uh, foot thick slab or so uh, in this type of terrain. And because of the weak snow that it was falling on, it was quite sensitive. Here's a side long view of it. You can see the wind was coming from left to right here, moving snow off of this cornice and depositing it into that slab on the right hand side. That same day, uh, a skier triggered an avalanche on the other side of the pass. This is the view now looking down uh, Galena Pass, the highways on the right hand side as you head down towards Smiley Creek. This slab was a little bit different. There was likely some wind effect here, but it was in a much more wind sheltered uh, piece of terrain. And it wasn't just new snow um, involved in this avalanche. It was some of the new snow from the storm, but also some uh, older snow. And it failed on a layer of buried surface ore that we buried in early January. So this layer has been highlighting a lot of the northern zones in our forecast for quite some time now. And over the last 20 days or so, it's been responsible for dozens of natural and, and several human and rider triggered avalanches. You can see the crown here on the left hand side. And then this is a picture of um, a little bit of a pit that that JP dug in the side of the crown. So the bed surface would be right here on the right hand side. Uh, and that's where the weak layer was. And you can follow that weak layer right into the side of his uh, pit pit profile here. So there was a one to two foot thick slab and buried surface ore. This is the most recent avalanche that we've observed on this layer. But again, it's been problematic over the last several weeks and, and we're not out of the woods yet um, when we're talking about this surface ore layer. This uh, particular layer really is kind of lurking in shady sheltered terrain. So imagine a lot of trees on a slope and you come into an open glade or or a small opening on a, on a mostly wind sheltered um, slope. And the reason it's preferable to be on a wind sheltered slope, at least if you're surface ore, is uh, the wind can knock surface ore down. And if surface ore is standing up and standing proud, uh, it often lasts longer uh, in, in a, once it's buried. So we have sheltered terrain, which helps the surface ore grow. Uh, it's also on a shadier slope so the sun can't destroy it before it gets buried. And if those are the most favorable conditions for growth, they're also where the surface ore is gonna persist likely the longest, which is what we're highlighting currently in uh, the Sawtooth Western Smoky Zone, as well as the Banner Summit Zone. So looking ahead, we've got a little tiny storm that's affecting the area right now, which is Friday night. Uh, it'll bring just a couple inches of snow to the Sawtooths and Banner Summit. Looking ahead though, we've got pretty nice weather on Saturday, kind of a lull before another actually pretty good sized storm arrives on, on Sunday. We've got good chance of snow across most of the forecast area Sunday, but it's gonna be highlighted in the Sawtooths, Western Smokies and Banner Summit again. Moving forward, we've got clearing skies going into the work week and actually kind of high and dry again until we're uh, looking almost to Valentine's Day. So let's enjoy this next storm. Speaking of, this is uh, a highlight of where the snowfall is supposed to be the greatest. You can see the scale here at the bottom. These pink colors are anywhere from four to six inches, which is about what we're going to expect along this, this red line here, which is roughly follows the crest of the Sawtooths. Galena Pass is right here. So we might get two to four out of that. Um, maybe closer to four to eight up in Banner, four to eight over the Sawtooths, and then not a bunch down here in the Wood River Valley, just an inch in Haley, and maybe a couple inches up in Stanley. So where are we at and what does this all mean? We have a current mix of moderate and low danger, and really we've gotten there for a, ver a variety of different reasons. Uh, we have persistent slab avalanche problems in all of the zones. And I'll highlight here just a, a quick snow pit that displays some of these layers. This snow pit is from the Galena Summit area, and you can clearly see 
weak layers that we buried in November, weak layers that we buried in December, and a weak layer that we buried in early January, which it, uh, was responsible for that skier triggered slide that we mentioned earlier. And really we're seeing a big divergence in how these weak layers behave, their distribution, how quick they're healing from zone to zone. And the primary driver for, for those differences is depth of these weak layers. In some of our deeper zones, these December and November weak layers are so far down that they're really, really unlikely for us to impact with our weight. Meanwhile, um, these ones near the surface are kind of in that prime, anywhere from one and a half to two feet deep range. If we go over into some of our shallower areas, which would mainly be the uh, Galena uh, Summit and Eastern Mountain Zone, um, the Pioneers, the Boulders, White Clouds, and some areas around the Soldier and uh, Wood River Valley Zone, primarily around the mountains around the Wood River Valley. We have shallower snowpacks there and any one of these three weak layers is really in play um, when you're going out into the mountains. So if you really want to dig into this a little bit more, I'd encourage you guys to just follow the forecast, um, read the discussions where we have a little bit more time to explain the differences. But if you're in these shallower zones, know that all three of these weak layers could be in play. If you're in some of these deeper zones, you're more likely to be dealing with um, this upper weak layer primarily. Uh, this can all change, of course, so check the forecast, uh, especially with some new snow moving in. We might be burying uh, another touchy weak layer on Sunday. So in summary, we've got lots of weak snow near the surface currently, which is getting buried as I speak right now on Friday, and will likely get buried a little bit deeper with some wind and new snow on Sunday. And if that storm materialized as materializes as forecast, expect to find some sensitive drifts if you're out there and you see um, actively blowing snow or if it's snowing hard on you. So anticipate that this weekend, that conditions could change quickly. And as we move forward, both uh, tomorrow and on into the future, into the spring, if we start to see a bit more moderate and low danger uh, sprinkled into our forecasts, Remember that uh, being on the bottom end of the danger scale really doesn't mean you can ca uh, throw caution to the wind. You've got to carry your beacon probe and shovel. You got to keep each other with an eyesight. If you're going to be skiing an avalanche train or riding an avalanche train, do it one at a time. Um, don't let the lower end of the danger scale let you drop all guard because avalanches can and uh, can occur at lower danger levels. So. With that in mind, also be sure to share what you see. Uh, it helps improve our forecast, and um, we really appreciate it. So until next time, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you in the hills.